All right, let's take a look at another sign here. And this is a fairly easy sign, but there's still a few cool grammar pieces that we can talk about. I'll start off just by indicating what the subject of the sentence is, and the subject of the sentence is here. And I know that because nun is attached to the, this noun here. Now the noun bodo translates to sidewalk. Now, before I get into what the rest of this is saying, I want to talk about what this wihan would uh, translate to. You've probably seen wihan in its form of wihe. So for example, if you wanted to say that you're doing something for somebody or for some reason, so for example, you can use uh, wihada or wihe. So for example, a very common sentence that you might see is maybe something like 저는, meaning I, and then 친구, which means friend. And then what you would do is put 르 here. And this 르 is really the same thing that's happening here. What I have is a person, which is a friend. So I'll just write friend. Friend, I'll do it below just like I did before. So I have a, a person, and then this, this actually literally translates to a person so or people. So this I'll just write people. It's plural. And in this case, I'm just going to make a sentence with the word friend, but a friend is a person and a person is literally a person, uh, but I'm just going to write people because it translates better to if I translate it to people. Now I put the object particle on this person that I'm talking about, just like here I put the object particle on this person that I'm talking about. But in the sentence that I'm creating, what I want to do is put we hey after uh, after I put this object particle and after the object particle is on a person. Now what this is going to indicate is that I do whatever the action is, it doesn't matter what the action is, I'll, I'll make an example up in a second. I'm doing that action for, for my friend or for the friend or for whoever is before this object particle here. So for example, I mean the, the most basic thing that you could say is to say something like, I did it for a friend, and that would be ambiguous as to what you did or, or any of that stuff. But simply you can just say something like, I can just put the verb hada, and I'll put it in the past tense just so it looks like a regular sentence. I can put something like this, soil, and this would literally just translate to, I did I did, and you don't really know what it is yet, or in this sentence, I'm just making it ambiguous. I did it for uh, my friend or for the friend. So really what I'm trying to explain with this example sentence here is if you put or the object particle in this case on some sort of person and, or attach it to some sort of person like this, and then followed by you're saying that something is for this person. So what I have here is something for this person. But, well, this is actually not the exact same form as I have in the sign. In my example sentence, I have he. And in the sign, I have han. And really, they're the same thing. It's the same word. What I have here, because I've attached, maybe I'll, do, I'll go back to my orange here. Because I've attached this, because I've attached this letter to wihada, and that's actually the uh, the actual dictionary word is wihada. Uh, because I've attached this thing, this letter to wihada, it's now no longer wihada, but it's actually wihan. As you might be aware, you can do this to a lot of words, this allows you to describe an upcoming noun. And in this case, well, what is the upcoming noun? Well, the upcoming noun is this word kori. And I'll go back to my purple here. I like my purple. The upcoming noun is kori, which means street or road or something like that. So really what this whole construction, and now I, get a, now I get a completely different color. This whole construction here of saram or wihan kori, well, it's a, well, this whole thing, this, this thing here, this whole section is really describing this noun, which is street or road. So let me write down street here, street. So it's just a street. So actually, if you wanted to simplify this sentence, you could just say something like this. And this is kind of a ridiculous sentence, but in theory, you could say, you could say, And what I've done here is I've literally just taken uh, the subject of the sentence, which is the same as the subject in my sentence, and I've eliminated all this garbage in the middle, and I've literally just said, uh, I put, again, this is sidewalk, sidewalk, 
and Kori means street. And imnida, you're probably aware, imnida is the formal way to say ida, which means is or are or was or were or some form of that uh, verb in English. But what this is just saying is is. So again, if I took out, if I made this a simple sentence and I just said bodunun kori imnida, that's literally just saying a sidewalk is a street. And I, I guess that in theory makes sense and it would be a sentence because a sidewalk is sort of like a street. Well, but what kind of street is it? That's the thing. It, it sort of is a street if you're thinking about it. Like things are going up and down this this sidewalk. A, a sidewalk is actually a street. But if you're going to make a sentence like that, wouldn't you want to sort of describe, maybe say that a sidewalk is a street that people walk on? Or it is a street for people. Oh, that's amazing. That's exactly what I have down here. I have that a sidewalk is a street. Okay, great. What type of street is it? Well, I can describe what type of street it is by putting something before here. And, and if you want to indicate that something is for something like this, well, you can use this construction here. So if I just simplify this whole thing, this whole sentence, I have, okay, a sidewalk. And that's the subject of my sentence. I know that it is a street. Well, what type of street is it? Well, it's a street for people. All right, so I know what this big thing here at the top means. Now I want to talk about what the smaller words would mean. Well, let me just talk about what the verb here is and what this is. If I want to ever indicate that somebody is doing an action for somebody, you're probably aware of this word juseo, which if you just put it after an object, it would mean, hey, give me that object. But what you can do is if you put a verb, and this, this is the actual verb here, it's yang bohada, yang hada. If you put a verb and if you eliminate ta, and now I just have the stem of the verb, and to the stem of the verb, if you uh, attach a uh, or a, uh, or in the case of hada, it, uh, ha becomes he. So if you attach those things to a verb and then follow it by juda, you're indicating that some sort of action is done for somebody. Well, if you want to indicate that you should do something for somebody, you need to add an imperative ending here. In other words, indicate that it's a command. And so if I put seo, which is a very common way to indicate that you know, you're basically telling somebody to do something, what I have here is you know, please or you should do this particular verb or you should do this particular verb for, you know, for somebody. Now, what does yang bohada mean? Well, yang bohada means a common translation for it is actually sort of to yield. I don't really love that translation. It's sort of also sort of to give way to, or almost really, you know, be careful of, but I guess a more, a better translation is to give way to. Yield is a common, probably the most common translation, but I don't really know if I really love that translation. Okay, well, who, who am I yielding to, or what am I yielding for, or something like that? Well, you can probably guess because we're talking about a sidewalk. Now, this word here, poingda, that translates to pedestrians. Pedestrian. And that makes perfect sense because if we're talking about a sidewalk, well, who needs to be yielded to on a sidewalk? Well, it's obviously pedestrians that need to be yielded to on a sidewalk. And the last thing that I need to talk about is this ege. Ege is put onto uh, nouns like this to indicate that something should happen to to some particular noun. So really, you know, if you translate this whole bottom part here into English, it says, please, or you must, or, you know, do this particular action of yielding, or in other words, just simply yield, or please yield to pedestrians. If we were going to translate this whole thing, it would say, a sidewalk is a street for people. And, uh, you know, you should please yield to pedestrians. If I was going to say this whole thing in Korean, I would say, and then down here it would say, Well, that was fun. I hope you learned a lot.